So some of the complexes will be in the strong field case and some will be in the weak field case. And what determines that? That's a good question. Well, first of all, sometimes you will simply be told in the problem. This okay. is a strong field or a weak field, and then you'll know how to draw it. Other times, though, you won't be told, and you're asked to figure it out. And you'll be given some clue that allows you to figure out whether you're in the strong field or the weak field case. So let's see an example of that. Let's stick with this. Um, so this is known to have one unpaired electron. And the question is then, is this in the strong field or the weak field case? We'll go through this together. That's our clue. Yeah, they've given us that clue, and now we're supposed to use that to figure out whether we're in the strong field or weak field case, and we'll go through together how to figure that out. Well, the way you work that out, so first of all, um, the key here is we need to know how many valence electrons the iron has. We need to know how many valence electrons this iron will have. So how many valence electrons will this iron have in this complex? How many valence electrons will the iron have in that complex? Um, if it's a neutral uh, iron, it's six valence electrons. No, plus a minus two. It's a eight, eight. So, but with ligands, it's different. Mm -hmm. Because we will fill up, we will skip the S orbital and we'll go to D orbital. Plus right, D although we don't actually have to think about that yet. Okay. We simply need to know how many valence electrons will this iron cation have? Plus two. How many valence electrons will it have? What do you think? Well, oh, we will have five, because we're taking into account yeah. the charge. So OK, that's right. Five. So it's eight minus five. That's right. So you made the first step, but you haven't quite made the second step. So your first step was right. Your first step was to figure out how many valence electrons the neutral iron would have. That's a skill we went over last time. Well, the neutral iron is in the eighth column from the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eighth column from the left. So neutral iron would have eight valence electrons. Notice that we don't just count the D electrons. It's in the sixth D column, but we also want to count the two S electrons. We don't even have to figure out how many are S or D, though. It's just in the eighth column from the left. So it would have eight electrons overall. And we know that the neutral atom would have some of the S and some of the D, although that's not too important. So how many valence electrons does the iron 3 plus have? Well, how many electrons has it lost? Three. 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 This is not how many electrons it has, notice. It's how many electrons it's lost. It must have lost three negatives to become three positive. So now there's five valence electrons left. This we don't get from the periodic table. This we just get from arithmetic. Eight minus three is five. Right. All right, and now we can ask, where will it put those valence electrons? What type of orbitals will it put that, those in? The D orbital? Yeah, that's what we worked on last time. We saw that for cations, it's better to put the electrons in the D orbital, not the S. In fact, generally speaking, the transition metal cations don't even use their S orbitals. So these are all going to go in the D. All right, now let's suppose that we're in the strong field case. We don't know if that's true, but let's suppose we're in the strong field case. Draw what the electron configuration would look like, then, for the iron. If we are in the strong field case, let's draw what the electrons would look like. So it looks like you went ahead and did both the strong and the weak field cases. That's good. I think you might have gotten the two cases confused. Oh. So in the strong field case, we put in the first three. 
And now where are we going to put the next electron? Well, it has a trade-off. It can either be unhappy because it's paired up, or it can be unhappy because it's put up at a higher energy level. Well, which is the lesser of two evils in this case? Well, in this case, it's better to be paired up. This is the normal case where it's better to be paired up because there's a big energy difference. It, it doesn't want to pay this big energy price to go up here. This is the normal case that we've always used previously in chemistry. Uh, and then that's only four, so then the fifth one would look like this. Okay, now how about the weak field case, which is the unusual case that we haven't ever seen before. Well, in the weak field case, you only pay a small energy price for going up here. So in this case, it will be better to be up here rather than be paired up. Okay. Uh, and then we would have a fifth one. So we always do this way. Yes. Like we just pick big, small, and just see how it will go. But then how will we make the decision which one is that? Like what do you think? So now we're ready to answer the question. What is the truth? Is this a strong field or a weak field uh, complex based on the information we were given? One, oh, it's a strong field because it's one unpaired electron. Now we use the clue we were given. Okay. They told us to accept that, in fact, there's only one unpaired electron. Oh, okay. Well, we just figured out that if it were a weak field, there would be five unpaired electrons, which does not correspond with the information that we were given. However, the strong field case does give us the one unpaired electron. So what did we decide? What was the answer to the question? Strong field yeah. case. The answer is that it's strong field. At this point, maybe we should cross this out. We were doing this as a test to see if the weak field would work, but now we see that the weak field doesn't work. It's so not consistent with the information we were given. Draw both right. cases. Then we use our clue. Right. Given clue. Okay. All right. So, um, how do you know whether? Uh, so again, there's going to be two different types of problems. Some types of problems they'll just tell you whether it's strong field or weak field, and then you can use that to correctly draw the structure. Other types of problems they're going to ask you whether it's strong field or weak field. Then they have to give you some additional clue to help you figure that out. And the way to solve that is just draw both possibilities and see which one is consistent with the clue. Notice that we didn't use the clue until the very end. We didn't use this until the very end. We just used this to check whether these pictures were right. You might have gone, you could kind of waste time if you tried to draw the pictures to match this uh, original. We're not trying to draw the pictures to match this originally. We just draw them to match how strong field and weak field have to work, and then we compare. Okay. All right, um, so now we've applied the crystal field theory completely for the first time. We've applied crystal field theory to the iron cyanide uh, complex iron, uh, and we've determined based on the information we were given that it must be in the strong field case.